Well, uh, Chairman, um, next Thursday, uh, in two days it is, uh, we will celebrate the 27th birthday of Schengen. So, thank you very much for the gift, uh, Mr. Minister. Uh, gift in German sense. Yeah. So, I think that uh, it's a shame that we have this debate today. It's in fact a disgrace, and certainly it's a disgrace, Mr. Minister, when you publish a few minutes before starting uh, this debate a press statement in Danish, but we have some Danish members who read that, saying that uh, this agreement is good for Europe and say that it has been the outcome of a very deep dialogue with the EU Commission and with the EU Parliament. That's what is in the statement of a few minutes ago this morning. Shame on by your services. Shame on well, Mr. Minister, we don't live longer in the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages, there was a dialogue between the King and the Parliament at that moment. But today we live in the 21st century. It's not based on dialogue. It's based on co-decision in a modern uh, society and in a modern Parliament. So we don't need your dialogue. What we need is that you recognize the powers of the European Parliament and in fact, dear colleague, it is not this dispute about the power of the European Parliament. It's in fact a question of an attempt by the Council to re-nationalize Schengen by doing two things. First of all, changing the legal basis so that the European Parliament is outside the decision-making process and secondly, and more important, by clearly stating that the implementing of the new acquis shall be delegated to the Council and not to the European Commission. So this is not an attack against the Parliament, but more importantly, this is an attack against the Commission, against the communitarian method, against the fact that Schengen is a full part of European policies. And what is even a bigger scandal, dear colleagues, is that the United Kingdom, who is not in Schengen, who has an opt-out, shall be better treated than the European Parliament. They shall, under Article 70, continue to be present, to be present in the negotiations, without having a say, apparently. They shall be present, but not the European Parliament. So I think, dear colleagues, that we have to take clear action today. First, I think we need to go to court. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, why is it necessary to pay for all this? If they want to renationalize, that they renationalize also, for example, and that they pay for themselves the Schengen acquis, instead of that it is the European Union who has to do it. And thirdly, why continuing, Minister, with you on justice and home affairs? Why continue with the Dublin II report on asylum? We have a trilogue on the 19th of June, why it is necessary to do it? Why continue with the Diaz de Mero report on the visa safeguard clause? We have two trialogues in the next two weeks. Why continuing with this? Why continuing with the Weber report on the reintroduction of border controls if we have no say on the Coelho report? And why in any way continue with you with the Danish presidency? Why not suspending all talks on just and home affairs until the new presidency is in place? <laughs>